the Duke Blue Devils were one of the surprise teams in 2022, one of the bigger surprises in the ACC. And now they're looking to take a step forward in 2023. We're taking a look at the top 10 players that will make that happen. And we start with the group that needs to take a step forward this year. You look at the secondary and what they were doing last year finished 105th in yards per game. So this is a group that struggled to defend the pass, but with Mike Elko's leadership, I think that they'll be better. And Chandler Rivers is a player that will take a step forward, will be play a bigger role for this secondary. You look at what he did last year, six passes defended, one interception, 52 tackles on the year. I think that this secondary has a lot of potential, and they added a player via the transfer portal that will help in that regard. But you're looking at a team – a secondary specifically that needs to take a step forward to help this defense. This defense was an improved group. It just wasn't through the air. Now, 105th isn't the worst, but you're sitting at the bottom part of the country in terms of defending the pass, and that needs to get better. Chandler Rivers is an exciting player who has the ability to make plays, whether that's in the trenches, near the line of scrimmage, or deep. I think that's one thing to keep an eye on. Another guy to watch is Texas AM transfer Miles Jones, six foot four cornerback. I think that a lot of people had big expectations for him with the Aggies. And at times he flashed some, some greatness. I think that you're looking at a player who could be an NFL player. Now, whether the first round talk that we saw a couple of years ago will return, we don't really know, but he is a player that can be electric for this defense. He can help this secondary quite a bit. Again, we talked about the struggles the secondary had last year and miles Jones is someone who can step up and play bigger for them. Terry has 29 passes defended, four interceptions. He has plenty of experience facing big-time competition, so that's going to help this group. Now, the one thing that also helps them is they're going to face quite a bit of talent at wide receiver for Duke as well. So Jordan Moore is a player to keep an eye on. You look at 656 yards last year with five touchdowns. I think this offense will be electric once again. This will be a very fun group to watch. And Moore is just one of many skill position players that we're going to talk about today. He is the more unknown player when it comes to the rest of the guys we're going to talk about, but someone who can be a solid producer for this team. Again, this offense was good last year and they can still take a step forward and they finished 68th in passing yards per game right in the middle. I think that that can be improved. And if this wide receiver group, is able to take a step forward, create more separation. Guys like Jordan Warwick can have better years. Now, another skill position that is is loaded for the Duke Blue Devils this year, running back. Jalen Coleman is just one of the running backs we'll talk about today. And honestly, if you think one of these running backs should be higher or lower, I probably don't have too many arguments against that, simply because this group is deep. You have one of the deepest groups in the country because you have these three guys that we're going to talk about today. And Coleman is is one of those players, 4.7 yards per carry on 102 carries, four touchdowns. It, it, you know, considering the production of the other two, he's not that far behind. And it's just a matter of who can be the more explosive, the more efficient ball carrier, because that's going to give he who gets the touches. And with Riley Leonard running the offense, teams are, are, are going to focus on him. You're going to have to find ways to – alleviate that pressure you have to find ways to make sure that he is not the sole target of this offense because the passing game obviously needs to take a step forward but the running backs need to help their quarterback as well now flipping back over to the defensive side of the ball we talk about the secondary but the reason why i think they can take a step forward is because of the talent they have returning brandon johnson is one of those players as well and you look at what he did in the nickel position 55 tackles, seven and a half tackles for loss, five and a half sacks, seven passes defended, two interceptions. Does a little bit of everything for this defense, a versatile weapon that you can move all over the field, and he's going to produce. That's huge, especially when you look at, I mean, you look at what this team did last year, fairly solid in being disruptive, and Johnson added to that front seven that could be solid once again this year, but it's a defensive backfield that returns the most experience and it's the group that needs to take the biggest step. I think the front seven is going through a little bit of a transition. So you're, you're, you'll see players coming in with new faces. Your, your front seven will need some time to get acclimated to this season. And the secondary 
needs to give them more time to do that. And that's a group that has plenty of talent, has plenty of experience. And Brandon Johnson is another weapon that they can utilize to help that group. Now, one of those guys that returns up front is Dwayne Carter. I think he has been at Duke forever and he continues to produce at a high level. I, I, two years ago, I talked about him as a potential breakout player, and he has turned into be one of the more exciting players for Duke on defense. 11 tackles were lost, five and a half sacks. And that defensive tackle, pretty explosive player, pretty good production for someone at that position. And that's a big reason why this front seven could take a step forward. Now you do lose Shaka Hayward. That is a big loss at linebacker. So the linebacking group may not be as experienced as they were in years past, but you're going to have Carter helping things up front, getting people in position, making sure that they are ready to go. And if a secondary that struggled last year can take a step forward, I don't think that I have too many concerns for that. Now to finish up with the rest of the offensive players we're talking about here, Jack was more another player that will add to that running back group to add to that running back room, 508 yards. He averaged 6.4 yards per carry. So that's someone who was efficient running the football, explosive running the football, and that's going to get him more carries. That's going to get him elevated into the offense and get the attention of opposing teams. That is how you balance out this offense. You take pressure away from Riley Leonard and you show that, Hey, we're more than just a quarterback and the passing game also benefits if you're able to continue that explosive play. Again, touches are going to be at, coming at a premium. And Jacko Moore had the least amount of carries of these three running backs that we'll talk about today last year. And he did the most with his time. And that's something that the coaches notice. That is something that they will pay attention to. And when you look at who he's competing with, you're – competing with quality competition. And Jordan Waters is another player that fits into that category. 566 yards last year, eight touchdowns, led the team in both of those categories. 123 carries also led the team in that. He had the most opportunities to make the most plays, and that's maybe going to continue. It might not. It all depends, again, on efficiency and explosiveness. This rushing attack was fairly solid for Duke last year, finished 39th in the country in yards per game. That's something they can build upon. That's something they can continue to see that their offense takes a step forward. And then it just comes down to what does the passing attack do? And speaking of that passing attack, Jalen Calhoun comes back for yet another season with Duke to be Riley Leonard's go-to guy. 873 yards last year, four touchdowns. I think you're looking at a guy who really became an explosive playmaker. When you look at what he did over the last couple of years, maybe not the most explosive player in terms of his production, but he was someone who had the opportunity, had the potential to do that. And I think that you're looking at a passing attack that even though they do need to take a step forward, they will be much better in 2023. And having some of that retention is probably the biggest reason why the offensive line returns a couple of starters that will help in that regard too. And that's going to give, the passing attack time to gel and become explosive. And that's the the biggest thing for this team, because when you look at what they have returning at quarterback in Riley Leonard, that's, that's really where it all starts and stops that Riley Leonard was one of the bigger surprises. And Duke also got him to stay for yet another year. The transfer portal and NIL really made things up in the air for a lot of quarterbacks, but Riley Leonard decides to stay at Duke after a year in which he produced 33 total touchdowns. He passed for 2,967 yards, rushed for 699 more yards. He is a dual threat that could be a problem. Now teams know what Duke can do. They know what they're capable of, and that's something they don't really have in their back pocket anymore. So they are going to have to figure out how do we elevate our game? How do we become even better? Because teams aren't going to be surprised that we are good. Teams aren't going to be shocked when we're up 14 points early in the game, because they know we are explosive on offense. We have a ton of talent returning on both sides of the ball, and we expect to be competing with the best of the best. Now, Duke is probably not competing for an ACC championship, but this is a team that can finish in the top half of the conference. Riley Leonard is one of the most exciting players in college football, maybe one of the most underrated quarterbacks in college football. And if he can get some help, from these other guys, more help, I should say, than he did last year. This is a group that could be really dangerous. And now this, the defense has to do its part too. But Duke is a team that has already taken a step forward. They didn't waste any time rebuilding under Mike Elko. And that's what's really exciting about them in 2023.